Last time we talked about the awe-inspiring power that black holes possess. We talked about the incredible distances that their relativistic jets can cover, how they can consume entire galaxies, and how habitable exoplanets could theoretically orbit around black holes. We talked about how our own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, could host up to 550 different habitable worlds within its habitable zone, each with its own stable orbit. And now we're going to talk about how one million Earth-like exoplanets could hypothetically ah, uh, great, there goes the alarm again, orbit around a black hole of the right mass. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment your thoughts on black holes, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, and this is Science Get. I have got to fix that alarm. Okay, so a black hole the size of Sagittarius A can host up to 550 different Earth-like exoplanets within its hypothetical habitable zone. Check. What would it be like to live on one of those worlds? Well, according to Sean Raymond, the dude who came up with all this stuff, the other worlds orbiting that black hole would be about twice the size in the night sky as our moon is here on Earth, and they would eclipse each other often. This is because they would be about twice the distance from each other as Earth is from the moon, give or take. The planets furthest out would probably be about the size of the full moon, and those at the furthest reaches of the habitable zone would appear as large as 50% the size of the full moon. Cool, right? It's very similar to how we think TRAPPIST-1 would look. An exoplanet around a black hole of this size would orbit it in about 1.6 days at the inner edge of the habitable zone, and about 4.6 days at the outer reaches of it. Even though Sagittarius A is the same diameter as our Sun, its gravitation is far more powerful, so it forces orbiting bodies to move much, much faster. For example, the speed at which Earth orbits the Sun is a blistering 30 kilometers a second. Pretty fast, right? Well, if you were to put Earth within the habitable zone of Sagittarius A, it would be moving at the speed of light. This would obviously cause a lot of time dilation effects. But like we mentioned in the last video, a black hole requires light in order to create a habitable zone around it. Sean Raymond suggests that if you put a ring of nine sun-like stars spaced apart at 0.5 AU around the black hole like Sagittarius A, then this creates the habitable zone that our 550 Earth-like worlds need. The nine suns orbiting the black hole would also be an incredible sight, as they would be completing their orbits at a rate of once every three hours. This means that once every 20 minutes, one of these stars would pass behind the black hole, treating our hypothetical life forms to a dazzling display of gravitational lensing as the black hole bends the sun's light around it. But how large would a black hole have to be to support one million Earth-like worlds? no larger than Sagittarius A, actually. This is where things get really crazy, as if they weren't already. Sean Raymond suggests that 42 Earth-mass planets could theoretically orbit in a ring around the Sun at a distance of 1 AU. Raymond notes that in order for the orbit to be stable, then each planet must have the same mass and must be evenly spaced out. This brings us back to Sagittarius A and our hypothetical system of worlds. Raymond suggests that such a black hole would be able to host up to 400 such rings in its habitable zone, and each ring would hold 2,500 exoplanets of the same mass, all equally spaced apart. But would nine suns be enough for such a system? Not according to Raymond. He suggests that 36 suns is the right number. In a system like that, no world would go untouched by the light of those 36 suns, and every world's sky would be filled with thousands of spheres. And that's how you would be able to host one million Earth-like exoplanets around a black hole. Black holes are pretty awesome, aren't they? They're also mysterious. Even though we've imaged one in another galaxy, we still don't know much about them. And for all Sean Raymond knows, this scenario of exoplanets might not work because of some unknown property that we've yet to discover. Fortunately, we are starting to learn more about these monsters. Recently, we even photographed one eating a star.
NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS if you don't want a headache, is pretty powerful. It's able to survey 85% of our night sky with its wide field cameras. Its main purpose is to find exoplanets around alien stars. But in 2019, it detected an extremely rare event, which you already know about because I gave it away in the subtitle. Yeah, it witnessed a tidal disruption event normally thought to be associated with a black hole eating a star. After following up with NASA's Neil Garrell Swift Observatory and others, astronomers were able to determine that they were looking at humanity's first front row seat view to a black hole eating a star about the same size as our own. Last time, we explained that when stars get too close to a black hole, they end up being stretched into a long tail of gas. The tail end of this gas is able to escape, but the rest of the star's material gets trapped orbiting around the black hole, forming an accretion disk. In our galaxy, events like this only happen about once every 10,000 years. Stupid Milky Way. But thanks to the people at NASA and the minds behind TESS and other satellites like it, we're able to see these events taking place in other galaxies. But if you think stellar mass black holes or supermassive black holes are terrifying, wait until you get a load of this. Primordial black holes, if they exist, are very different from their supermassive and stellar mass counterparts. They're small by comparison, about the mass of the Earth with a radius that is not even really worth talking about. These are just hypothetical. Are you done? Okay, guess I can't say that word anymore. Objects. We've never seen a primordial black hole, but scientists think we might be able to detect them soon. And here's how. Black holes can be any mass, as long as that mass is greater than our moon. Any smaller, and according to Stephen Hawking, they would evaporate. Primordial black holes, if they exist, would be left over from the Big Bang. And the unique conditions caused by the Big Bang would have been the catalyst for their creation. Now the conditions, moments after the Big Bang, is a complicated thing to discuss. And it's something we're not going to talk about this time. In the moments after the Big Bang, researchers suggested that there might have been a moment when space-time was far more curved than it is now before eventually flattening out. This temporary curvature is what scientists think likely would have produced these black holes creating fluctuations in the expanding universe so powerful that they resulted in the creation of tiny Earth mass black holes. Or if these things came first, would Earth mass be like primordial black hole mass instead? Whatever. These events theoretically could have left behind perturbations throughout the galaxy, periodically sending out gravitational waves for us to detect. It's these waves, so-called secondary gravitational waves, that researchers want the Event Horizon Telescope project to keep an eye out for. These gravitational waves would be much weaker than a normal black hole. But if these scientists are right, we could soon get confirmation that these primordial black holes are swimming throughout our galaxy. Also, one might be orbiting us. But that's a subject for part three. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like and comment below and tell me when you want part three. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Cat. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.